www.enerfood.com. That's E-N-E-R-F, like Frank, O-O-D, like dog, dot com. Enerfood.com. A big thank you to all of our listeners already taking the products that Enter Health offers. We truly appreciate it. We thank you for your support and encourage you to listen often to stay informed during these crucial times. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is The Hawk. It's coming to you live, 7-19-2013, Friday night. And I'll tell you what, uh, it's interesting. Whereas in Britain, they're waiting for the royal baby to come. And I swore that they were probably going to try to do it on the 18th. But you can bet when this baby comes, there will be some sort of numerological stuff, some kind of, you know, devil may care, you know, sort of 666. I thought they were doing the 18th where you'd have three sixes and then, you know, uh, that sort of a thing. And then where you'd also have uh, uh, some sort of an acronym. So I suppose we'll have to watch and see. But I can tell you the baby that's being born in this country right now is you're having a baby called a race war that's being fomented. And here we, once again, we have Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson. And now we have Joker Tut himself comes out into the thing. Last time I looked, I thought the Joker Tut was the president of Hispanics, the president of uh, Irish, the president of Italians, the president of uh, Congolese, the president of, you know, wherever your forefathers may have come from, France, England, Germany, whatever it is. It's the President of the United States. And instead of figuring out a way and doing the things that would have created prosperity in the United States, put an end to the wars, put an end to the Nazi of America, put an end to all of the items that are being done to you right now, people of all colors, all creeds, all races. The surveillance, by the way, today the NSA has just informed you, or the head of the DNI, the, you know, the National Intelligence goofballs, just informed you that the FISA court, that's the FISA court, the FISA court has once again approved, given them approval that they get every seek every 90 days, allegedly, so that they can collect all this information about you. And then today in Aspen, all the Luciferian scum like Chertoff, whose name means the devil, Chert, Chertoff, son of the devil, Chert. Chart. Well, you're out there in Aspen, breathing the old heavy air in there, all the nice, clean, cool air. You got all your, you know, your deck shoes on, and you got your, you know, your casual clothes. I've sat right there in front of your Aspen Institute. I've sat right up in front of there and watched all of that. I suspect this is being held in another venue because they seem to be up high. But I can tell you this: tonight they'll be downtown. They'll be. Uh, Somebody will be, uh, you could go to the Hotel Jerome right today and have a good burger. And you'll see them having a drink down there. And they'll be in the little disco down there. And they'll be up in their little chalets. And they'll probably be doing some real nice uh, uh, blood sacrifice and praying to Lucy and doing all kind of, uh, you know, sexual perversions up in there. So while down in the flatlands and all over, and if you've looked at the thing, there's a list of locations of Al Sharpton's protest for Trayvon Martin against white gun owners. Well, you know, I thought Zimmerman was Hispanic. I don't know about all this stuff. I don't know. Am I because I've got a uh, tan, a white gun owner? I don't know. You know, you see, it's all relevant here. It's all relevant because Martin Luther King said that we need to judge a man by the character, his character, the qualities of him and his soul, 
not by the color of his skin, but now what is, what is the plantation boss Sharpton Holder, Jesse Jackson, they're nothing more than the straw boss, boss and the other slaves, and implementing, as I said last night, Lynch's, old man Lynch's prescription about how to pit various slaves against one another. Well, it doesn't make what color the slaves are, does it? Or what race the slaves are? or what creed the slaves are. If you have slaves, all you want to do is to pit them against each other to create a chaos and fighting and all kind of things so that somebody who's standing back uh, up on the balcony, like the, uh, like Massa Sharpton, like Massa Sharpton and Massa Jesse Jackson. And incidentally, isn't it interesting as we talk about this, that Jesse Jackson allegedly allegedly, is a 33rd degree Prince Hall Mason. Al Sharpton, I don't know about him specifically, but I do recall his very interesting videotape where old Al was wearing the cowboy hat, and before he started, uh, you know, losing a little weight, you know, and hanging out with these hot new young girls, when Al was uh, doing deals for cocaine, uh, or allegedly he was trying to find out more about this cocaine deal so he could turn them in. But if you ever saw that tape in the good old days, you do it. And then I remember this Tawana Brawley case and all of the different cases he's been involved with have done nothing but to promulgate, foment, division of race where he then can make a big pot of cash based upon the controversial subjects. I also go back and recall, uh, you know, certain uh, brothers, uh, allegedly, of Jesse Jackson, who were uh, drug dealers in South Carolina. And back in those days, uh, you know, I knew people who knew Jesse on the south side of Chicago. And uh, and, and uh, I knew people who uh, were lived down the street, you know, in those areas. And... Uh, near where the Joker Tut allegedly lives now, you know, or has a house or did have a house that he got from the Greek, I guess it's the white Greek mob boss, allegedly, real estate, you know, corrupt real estate guy who gave him a deal on it. So, you know, here's the deal. Why didn't the president talk about, you know, we're going to try to create a climate where we could lower unemployment in the United States down to 3% or 2% or 1%. Why didn't this president, when he had the opportunity as well, and when he had the opportunity several times with Ben Bernanke, helicopter Ben, who was talking about being the helicopter guy when he came on board, now the helicopter is sure flying and he's dumping money out, but he's dumping out $85 billion or more per month to the money center banks and the people who own the stock in the Federal Reserve banks, and most of those are foreign banks. Now how is that benefiting a black, young black man or woman in Cabrini Green? How is that benefiting a young black man or woman on South Stony Island in Chicago? How is that benefiting somebody in the South Bronx or Harlem or Overton or wherever it might be or in Baltimore? You know, where, who, who is being benefited by that? Is it benefiting any uh, young unemployed or old 60-some-year-old unemployed white person who's, you know, always worrying about losing a mortgage or losing a house, you know, who applied for a job, 300, 400 jobs in a year, and they can't get hired, 
or who lives in a small rural community where the only factory that was there left 10 years ago, 15 years ago, and now 80% of the town has disappeared. And you got one guy who's the cop, the mayor, the, you know, the undertaker, the furniture dealer, and uh, his wife owns the tea room and the bar, you know, and everybody else is gone. You know, because nobody is working on the farms anymore because the farms were all bought up by some large conglomerate. So instead of doing what they could have done, and incidentally, I fault George W. Bush as well as I fault this Democratic Joker Tut president. Rex Arbusto and those guys, and you remember how what they could have done with the tarp or the towel or the this or the that or the E-I-E-I-O or the, or the big, uh, the big, what do they call it, the Q&E. You know, they call it something different every couple of years so that you don't remember what it's going about, which is basically a bunch of jackals and hyenas and bottom-feeding scumbag Luciferian politicians that are lower than child molesters, and some of them are child molesters. I would warrant that instead of doing that, they are giving them to those people to then disperse to the high Luciferians, the high Masonics, the high secret society types who own the banks, who are behind the scenes, and who have taken their jobs, shipped their jobs to China, shipped their jobs forward, Ford to Hermosillo, Mexico, ship the jobs to China, General Motors, you see. And then you leave an inner city totally desolate, and you take away the factory and the manufacturing jobs. Um, Gary, Indiana, Chicago, South Bend, you just go along, Cleveland, all along the Lake Toledo. Sandusky, all those different cities in Ohio, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, all of these places where there used to be first quality, strong manufacturing bases where we made everything. In the 50s, we consumed it. Everything except for tin and small plastic toys was made in the United States. And then the next thing you knew was... Uh, Japanese transistor radios. Then the next thing you knew it was uh, TVs that weren't made in the United States anymore. And then you go down the list, and then it was all the textiles removed from the Carolinas. All the shoes removed from, from Missouri and uh, from uh, other places in the United States where the like international shoe used to be in St. Louis. All of these jobs now then went somewhere else. We do not make, you know, the pencils. We do not make the the uh, chemicals. We do not make the machinery. We do not make the steel. We do not, you know, do all of these things. Now what it is that we provide? We provide raw materials like a client country of somebody who does take the raw materials and manufacture. So what they could have done, George W. Bush's crowd, and you remember old Skeletor, you know, big old Skeletor. And you remember all those people and terrible Timmy, you know, and all of these guys. Now we got Bernanke. All right. What they could have done, they've stolen enough money and given it to bail out the money center banks in New York City, in Zurich, in London, in Frankfurt, and all around the world, Japan. They've given all this money to the money center banks, which then in turn have been buying the stock market and keeping it propped up. And at the same point in time, the amount of money now would amount to, I remember when it was about $27 trillion. Well, now they're doing $85 billion a month. So you're doing, you know, several trillion a year, maybe three, four trillion and all the stuff. So what are you doing? You're up maybe, what, $30, $40 trillion? That could have paid off. They could have taken that money and paid off. Every single mortgage in the United States could have been paid off with that money. Every single student loan. Every single 
automobile loan, every single credit card or revolving charge account in the United States could have been paid off with the same amount of money that they've handed and given to the big money center banks. Then you see, if all of those loans could have been paid off and everybody is zeroed out, then the banks could have gone back to you and said, hey, how about a place on the lake? Hey, why don't you buy a little uh, mountain of chalet in the uh, in uh, the mountains of Chile or, uh, you know, in Colombia or Mexico or Canada or wherever it might be. How about the little beach house? And we could have refinanced an entire country, or if people chose not to, they could have borrowed money to expand or to start a business. Now, you know, I sometimes go this route, guys to explain things in such a way as you have to step back and look at it. But instead, we're promoting race problems and saying it's those big, bad white guys who are killing them. You saw the Piers Morgan Larry Elder. Larry Elder is a, uh, a black uh, uh, radio talk show host, and Piers Morgan gets him on and I guess calls him a coward before the show to try to fire him up and uh, to do some stuff. But the fact of the matter is, Lee Elder has basically said that it's really quite unusual to see a case where a black teenager is killed by a white shooter. In this case, it was a self-defense shooter, and the FBI's own investigation basically says that there was no race involved. And then you're playing games, and now you have the Joker Tuck comes back out and basically gives his tip and okay that he's fine with the, uh, with the riots because he said you can't have a conversation in America. So he's basically giving you the wink, and maybe he's giving you the Masonic hood wink, no pun intended with the hoodies. But in Masonic world, you're hoodwinked. When they take you in there for your first degree, they got your one trouser leg up, they got a, a, a cable toe rope around your neck, around your throat, and they got you at the point of a sword tip. And you're blindfolded and you're in your underwear drawers or your pajama pants, and they take you in and they lay you down and they put you and stick the sword in your throat and all that crap and make you recite things that you shouldn't recite. Well, that's called being hoodwinked. Well, now he's telling everybody hoodwinked just fine. And I'll say responsible, the Joker said, Al Sharpton, if there's anyone is killed or any violence that takes place tomorrow, if anyone is beaten up, any white person, any Hispanic person, any Asian person are killed or is involved in arrest, that is all on you guys. You guys are going to wear the responsibility like an albatross around your stinking, racist, promoting hatred necks filled with Luciferian bile and venom. And I'm going to tell you, Larry Elder hits it hard on the, on the note. Larry Elder says to Piers Morgan, a piece of crap who can't go back to London, or they're going to arrest him over there. He says to him, he says, I'm not just bothered by how you're handling this, Larry. He says, you think you're doing something for black people, but you're not. You're making black people feel as though they're under siege, and it's not true. It's an outrage, Elder said. Elder then hit Morgan with the cold, hard facts, noting that there were 7,000 murders last year of black people, almost all almost all of which were committed by other black people. Elder also highlighted the fact that there have been 480 black people murdered in Chicago alone this year, and 75% of the cases there are yet to be solved. And Elder says to Piers Morgan, where are the cameras? Where are those shows? It's outrageous to act as if black America should fear some non-black guy stalking some kid at night. The likelihood of a black person being killed 
by a non-black person is extremely remote, which is why this has become such a big national issue in the first place. Half of the num murders in this country, Elder says, are committed by black people, even though black people are only 12% of the population. This is why commonsensical people profile. In other words, you're, half the murders are committed by blacks, then that is why people who have common sense are a little bit leery. You remember what, uh, at one point in time where, uh, uh, you could, you could see a situation where the best thing that you could ever do for a black person was to be able to allow them to have a firearm and to protect themselves and to protect their families and their homes against violence from whoever it comes from. And in this case, almost always comes from other black people. Home invasions, being shot in the corner, you know, errant shots through windows. You know, there are neighborhoods where, you know, you, you go to, you know, uh, to the gang neighborhoods where it's just, you know, wild, wild west every single night. And the mothers have to put their children and they sleep inside the bathtub in a, in an inner room or they lay on the floor and with mattresses pulled, pull, you know, pulled up against them to protect against bullets coming through the walls. So the fact is now you want to unleash this pent up thing and you want to tell the black people that it's whitey's doing it to them. Whitey's killing their teenagers. Whitey's killing a kid with Skittles. Whitey's doing this. Whitey's doing that. When the fact of the matter is, George Zimmerman is Hispanic. Was he not a minority as well? But you see, it doesn't make any difference. Because Al Sharpton and the Joker Tut Lizard and Holder, I always remember Holder being involved with the Justice Department when it was Butch Reno and they killed, you know, 30-some little baby children at Waco, and they kept shooting gas, ferret round after ferret round, and gas and bullets into that buried school bus bunker where the children were there to be protected. When people would come out of the Waco compound, they shot them. That's what Holder's about. Holder is about, you know, having accessory after the fact responsibility for murder of Border Patrol agents. These guys have carved up and are representing people in the Illuminati banker systems who have carved up a $50 trillion jackpot. Actually, you owe them. The United States government's total debts. Remember old Professor Lawrence Kotlikoff, you know? Ronald Reagan's favorite economist, Boston University. $240 trillion are the true obligation the United States government cannot be paid off. And they're telling these young black people to then go and basically to riot in front of, you know, over a hundred. Actually, I've seen the, the, the thing. You can go to, uh, libertyfederation.com, libertyfederation.com. And I think, uh, maybe, uh, Steve Quayle posted, uh, posted elsewhere on the web, but libertyfederation.com. And you can see the location of Al Sharpton's protest for Trayvon Martin and against white gun owners, and against, according to Holder, the right to self-defense and to stand your ground. That right to self-defense and stand your ground means if you're in your house, you got to retreat out of your house if somebody burglarizes or busts the front door down. But anymore, that's getting to be like uh, the federal marshals in Florida who broke in on the woman. She looks up from the sink, and some guy out there in a in a vest and a helmet and, you know, with the goggles and stuff is pointing a gun right at her head. She ducks down, screams, and she goes into the bedroom and gets a 38, thinking somebody's attacking her house. And you got people with the ram battering the front door saying, we're the police. Well, how do you know they're the cops? The federal marshals in this case, if you read about the case, I think it was up on Alex Jones today. If you read about that case... There are people coming to the front door, and it's a story called, let's see, Florida nurse terrorized by U.S. Marshal in a warrantless raid. Typical evening after work, Sarasota, Florida, resident Louise Goldsberry finished dinner and began to clean up. 
The nurse employed by the Sarasota Doctors Hospital proceeded toward the kitchen sink, cleaned the dish, she gazed out the window, met the eyes of a man wearing a hunting vest who was aiming a gun directly at her face. She dropped to the floor and began screaming, and in a panic, she managed to crawl her way to the bedroom to receive her weapon, a 38 caliber revolver she had purchased to provide comfort while living alone. Now, your attorney general holder, because he ain't mine, your attorney general holder will say that you need to retreat from your home in the advance of somebody like that. You need to be passive and not get it. She did the right thing, got her 38. But then you need to go and read the rest of the story and how her boyfriend was there and who's a manager for a security alarm company. And it turns out, I'm going to name this U.S. Marshal's name. Normally, I would not give a U.S. Marshal's name out over the air. But let's see what his name is, because this guy is a piece of pill. This guy is a piece of crap, U.S. Marshal. Let's see what his name is right here. Okay. Yeah, let's see, I'm trying to find Yeah, here it is right here. According to the police, the man at the front door who is yelling at me, cursing them and with the F words and all the stuff, and says, open the door, we're the F and police, and blah, 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 no mention about search warrants, nothing. And then they come on in the thing with guns drawn, throw everybody to the floor, the whole nine yards. And then there's a standoff because the woman is smart. She hadn't dropped her gun. And so they said, you dropped your gun, I'll shoot you. Well... Federal Marshal, U.S. Marshal Matt Wiggins of the U.S. Marshal's Fugitive Division. Matt Wiggins, you unconstitutional piece of filth, discredit to the U.S. Marshal's Fugitive Division badge. Matt Wiggins says that they had a tip that there was a suspect inside the apartment complex, but admitted they had no specific information that indicated he was inside Goldsberry's apartment. You have a obligation there, Matt Wiggins, to get a search warrant. You had no information that anybody went in to that apartment. You're required to have a search warrant. A search warrant. Scumbag federal marshal, U.S. Marshal Matt Wiggins of the Fugitive Division, you're a scumbag, unconstitutional Nazi. And then Wiggins said, well, the people inside the apartment didn't immediately open up. And that gave them reason to believe they were harboring the alleged child racist suspect, rapist suspect. Well, U.S. piece of crap, U.S. Marshal, piece of crap, U.S. Marshal Matt Wiggins of the Fugitive Division. He then goes on to say and has the audacity to say nobody in the other units reacted that way. Well, everybody just don't have to bow down to your U.S. Marshal butt, you piece of trash, Matt Wiggins. You unconstitutional scumbag. Your career dissipation light is going to go off. Buddy, you're going to see it blinking in the back of your mind's eye because the people ain't going to stand for your crap any longer. You need a search warrant, Matt Wiggins. So it's not going to be somebody at the door is going to be... With natural and man-made disasters and economic turmoil, if we don't get well prepared, we will most certainly regret it. Good readiness must include storage of high-quality food that will build us up rather than tear us down. Much of the storable food available is full of bad fats, salt, sugar, nutrient-poor refined foods, and even MSG. In response, Enter Health Botanicals has created our 40-day and 40-night 100% organic preparedness pail. It's GMO-free and has a 10- to 20-year shelf life if stored at 60 degrees or less. Some of the items need cooking, some can be eaten dry, while some can be soaked and sprouted. These are selling out fast at third the price of storable food packages. Call us at 866-762-9238. That's 866-762-9238. Or go to enerfood.com, E-N-E-R-F-O-O-D.com. 866-762-9238. Or go to E-N-E-R-F-O-O-D.com.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Survive to Thrive, and we're brought to you by Inner Health Botanicals. That's innerfood.com, E-N-E-R-F-O-O-D.com. And let me tell you something. If you would like to get some inner food, and what does inner food do? With one shake or two shakes a day, you can get almost all the nutrients you're needing. If you're on the run, if you're hiding in a cane break from a man you can't seem to shake, if you're in a Anne Frank type apartment while the Nazis of the Obama administration are pounding on doors and coming there and you're standing your ground but you're standing it in a safe room, you're going to need the material. You're going to need to have the things that can give you nutrition while you're in a bad way situation. And if you have a collapse of the banking institute, if you have a nuclear weapon or an EMP that takes out all of the power grid in the United States because the U.S. is getting ready, as Dempsey said, little fancy pants, little glee club, little uh, uh, fancy Nancy boy Dempsey, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, tipped up a cane that basically they were looking into kinetic action in Syria. Well, are the Russians going to launch an EMP attack with a nuke? They're going to take out, uh, you know, cities here? And isn't it interesting, why would you then have DHS and the Pentagon with thousands and thousands of Russian troops and Spetsnaz special forces and Russian paratroopers and the equivalent of Russian Spets seals in the United States when we're getting ready to possibly go to war with Syria and Iran and that Russia is on their side and has already told us they will reserve the right to nuke us, then why do you have Wendy L. Schneider out there at Fort Carson? Why do you have Russian troops there? Why do you have them down at Hood? Why are they all over in Gatlinburg, Tennessee? Why are they all over in North Carolina at Bragg and up around Averyville and Buncombe County up in there? in the mountains. Why are they up there on Cherokee? Why are they up there, you know, by Balsam Mountain? Why are they all sitting around in, uh, you know, in uh, Colorado, in Montana? Ladies and gentlemen, you're in a climate now where you're getting ready to have this country destroyed and taken down, and you are going to be the food. You're going to be the soil at green, so you're going to need some energy, and you're going to need long-term storage food and why you're holding out, and you better have thousands and thousands and thousands of rounds of ammunition, or you better be real good and fast with bow and arrow. You better be real good and fast with a sickle, with a scythe, with a katana sword, with a, a sharp custom knife, with a K-bar, whatever it might be, a rusty old World War I bayonet. But you're going to be under duress, and I'm going to tell you, you better get some inner food while you got the chance. Do not have the brain freeze, the cognitive dissonance. I know this stuff is overwhelming. I know this stuff is agitating, and it gives you tremendous angst, and it upsets everybody because your nation that you grew up in and that you loved is now being destroyed piecemeal every single day. The politicians do not care anything about staying in power and keeping a jackpot for themselves and carving it up. They have protection from men with automatic weapons. They have the right to carry and to have weapons of any choosing they want to. They don't care. I remember when old uh, Senator Kennedy, his guards used to carry uh, mini Uzis. They weren't even licensed to carry them, and they used to carry them inside Washington, D.C., and they weren't even licensed. Did he go to jail? Did they go to jail? Hell no. So I'm just telling you, you better get all the inner food you can. You drink two shakes a day. It will extend the life of your long-term storage food or of your canned goods, your garden supplies, whatever it is you're putting back. And do it while you got the chance. Prepare like there is no tomorrow because there may not be. Tomorrow we've got 132, last count I saw, 132 protests, most of them in federal buildings in all kinds of cities. Um, you can look at that list, but I'm telling you, why you've got the chance, call Interfood, you know, Inner Health Botanicals. Go to interfood.com or dial 866-762-9238. You tell them Hawk sent you. If you say the word Hawk, 
Hawk sent me. They will give you a discount even over and above the quantity discount you're doing if you're buying a large amount. You can get that freeze-dried pack of that inner foods. You can put them in a, you know, in your uh, backpacks, your bug-out bags. You can stack them up at your mountain cabin or your fishing camp out on the bayou or whatever it is you're going to go to make your last stand or in your basement, you know, shelf or your safe house shelf or in your tree house or your little mountain cave or wherever you're going to go. You better get all the things you're going to need to feed yourself, to keep yourself alive, and you better do it now. You call them, 866-762-9238. You tell the inner food guys, Hawk sent you, and get some of those herbal tinctures. The herbal tinctures allow you to treat yourself for all sorts of deficiencies, ailments, nutritional problems where you have symptoms, and that traditionally, traditionally, Certain herbal remedies have been indicated for use with them. You can read all about the herbal remedies, what in the past history of those herbal remedies other people and doctors and people have done with those in the days before Big Pharma and all of these drugs that when you take a new drug from Big Pharma, well, first of all, it turns off your uh, your brain, it gives you cancer, uh, makes your parts rot off, uh, you know, and all of that stuff, and uh, you know, and you can't go to the bathroom. You know, so that's the side effect. Then you need 17 more drugs to counteract every one of those. Instead, why don't you take the Silmarin? Why don't you have the coconut, uh, you know, a powder, or the coconut uh, uh, butter, the coconut oils, the different things that will give you uh, a tremendous benefit? Why don't you take the inner food that has all the nutrients in it in a concentrated form that will boost your body up and give your immune system strongly? Get it while you can. You tell them Hawk sent you, you'll get a discount. And ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to get gold or silver, if you would like to understand what's getting ready to come onto this planet via, you know, long walkers, via giants, Nepaline, any of that, you need to call Steve Quayle, 406-586-4840, 406-586-4840, or you can email Steve Quayle at Steve. 777 at stevequail.com and if you do that you tell them Hawk sent you and you need to get all the gold and silver you could get but that's if you've already got your long term storage food, your inner food your camping supplies, your medical supplies, your water purification system and then if you've got money left over then by all means buy the gold and the silver and that's exactly what V told you to do the head trader of the Royal Bank of Scotland who's quit, who is a strong Christian man, who's telling you he's not going to play those games anymore, and to get your money out of the banks, get your money out of the stock market, get your money out of the bond markets, get your money out of paper and turn it into something you can eat, something you can give you nutrition, something you can purify water with, something you can defend your family and yourself and your property with, a firearm, uh, knives, Katana swords, machetes, I don't care what it is, but you better get it, you better do it now. Because, ladies and gentlemen, it is just time to go. Tomorrow, I don't know if anything's going to happen, and I hope it does not, but I predict that there will be some riots and there will be some police actions tomorrow. Let me just run off a few of these cities of Al Sharpton, allegedly his uh, protests that he's organizing. Anniston, Alabama. Uh, let's see here. i got to see this a little better. Let me get this old spyglass on this. Anniston, Alabama. I used to know a lot of people down there. A uh, group of concerned parrots is on, going to be on Noble Street. Birmingham, Alabama. Hugo Black Federal Courthouse. Madison, Alabama. The Madison Mission SDA Church. Mobile, Montgomery. 403 West Powell. Mobile, U.S. Federal Courthouse, Southern District. All right, let me skip down. Little Rock at the Federal Building. Phoenix, Arizona. 401 West Washington Street, Lodi, California, 950 South Garfield, Los Angeles at the Berendo Middle School, Los Angeles, 312 North Spring Street. And some of these times are at early in the morning, some are at noon, some are all afternoon, some are at 6 o'clock at night, 7 o'clock at night, so you got to check these out. Open California, this is where they've already been having riots, the Ronald 
B. Dellums Federal Building, 1301 Clay, uh, Oakland, California, the number two from the city center, BART to 1301 Clay. See, they're going to be doing a whole visual there. And uh, sign making, Riverside, California, Sacramento, California, at the courthouse, San Bernardino, where they just had some uh, people attacked. And who do you contact to find out about that one? It says, oh, the daughters of Nepertiti, the Joker Tet World people. The East, you know, the secret society of the daughters of Nepertiti. Yes, there is a secret society component in this. Jesse Jackson, 33rd degree Mason. Trayvon Martin's father is the master Mason of the, the worshipful master of the Masonic, the Prince Hall Lodge in that area down there. These people are probably 33rd degree. They're part of the, they're part of the Luciferian conspiracy. And what does that have to do with it? Ordo ab chao. Out of chaos comes the order. And you see the Luciferians, the Masonics, including the Prince Hall Masons, the, <laughs> the Egyptians, the old Pharaonic religions and all of that stuff, the Egyptian uh, high, high religious things. All of these deals, the Muslims, they all tie in together as strange bedfellows with the Nazis and everybody, don't they? It's a Luciferian thing. Sacramento, San Bernardino, San Francisco, 97th Street, Seaside, California, Denver, Colorado, Man, oh, man, oh, man, Fort Collins, Colorado, Hartford, Connecticut, Washington, D.C., at the Federal Courthouse, Fort Myers, Florida, Martin Luther King Boulevard, Fort Myers, Florida, number two. Oh, you got to get Whitey in Fort Myers, 2662 St. Charles, Fort Pierce, Florida, Gainesville, Florida, Jacksonville, Florida, Miami, Florida, at the William Ferguson Courthouse. Also, Miami, number two, at uh, 21300 Southwest 114th Avenue, Orlando, Florida, 80 North Huey Avenue. Then you got Tallahassee, Florida, and Tampa, Florida, down there at Sam Gibbons Federal Courthouse. I've been told that there's not much downtown anymore, although what they could wreck if they decide to ride down there is destroy everybody's jobs. Then even the black people that work to those jobs won't have a place to go to next week. That'll be just be really fine and smart for them to do it. But anyway, you better watch out. Alfreda, Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia, at the Federal Building and at 3201 Summerwood Circle. And also at 250 George Avenue, Southeast Suite 212. And also at Grace Place, Athena Lane, Atlanta. And Augusta, Georgia. Oh, man, it just goes on. Dawson, Georgia. Lafayette, Georgia. Savannah, Georgia. Stone Mountain, Georgia. Well, let me tell you something. You're going to go to Stone Mountain, Georgia and do it. You'd better watch out because there's liable to be a counter-protest there. Thomasville, Georgia. Valdosta, Georgia. Look at all the Georgias. Davenport, Iowa, Des Moines, Iowa, Chicago, Illinois, at the Federal, Dirksen Federal Building, Peoria, Illinois, on North Richard Pryor Boulevard, Waukegan, Illinois, Indianapolis, Indiana, at the Red Mill Place, 3858, Wichita, Kansas, at 17th and Hillside, Bowling Green, Kentucky, Lexington, Kentucky, at the District Court, Baton Rouge, North 3rd Street, uh, New Orleans, Louisiana, the District Federal Court Building, Poydras, 500 Poydras. That's over there by the, uh, uh, let's see, Poydras, uh, that's, there's the tower there, Poydras, and then there's, uh, I think, the Intercontinental Hotels in that area. Shreveport, Louisiana, Springfield, Massachusetts, Detroit, Michigan. Well, Detroit ought to just uh, hire RoboCop, sell the entire city to a corporation, and bring the RoboCops on. Looks like DARPA's got your robot, the Terminator robot, Atlas, all ready to go. All they got to do is put a little skin on him, make him look like Arnold Schwarzenegger, and I'll be back, you know, or RoboCop in the cool uh, armor. Flint, Michigan, Pontiac, Michigan, second in Pontiac, Saginaw, Minneapolis, Maryland Heights, Missouri, uh, St. Louis, Missouri, the federal court downtown, United States Attorney's Office in front of that, St. Louis. Thomas F. Eagleton U.S. Courthouse in St. Louis. Charleston, North Carolina. Charlotte, North Carolina. Or excuse me, Charlotte, North Carolina. Two of them there. 400 West Trade Street. 
trying to hit everybody I can. Raleigh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, Annapolis, Maryland, Capitol Heights, Maryland, Waldorf, Maryland, Billings, Montana at the Federal Building. Billings, Montana at the Federal Building. I'll tell you what, you know, somebody ought to go down there and just, uh, you know, uh, let them know what uh, Billings is all about. Fayetteville, North Carolina, two of them there. Hay Street downtown and 117 Dick Streets on the Cumberland County Courthouse. Goldsboro, North Carolina. Greensboro, North Carolina. New Bern, Wilkesboro. Winston, Salem, North Carolina on Trade Street. Camden, New Jersey. Jersey City, Newark, New Jersey. Las Vegas, Nevada. Albany, New York. Ladies and gentlemen, these are in all these different cities. Now, let me just tell you, Buffalo, New York, Hollis, New York, Nassau County, New York, New York, New York, you know, they're going to be at Three Police Plaza at 45 Central Park North, uh, Staten Island, New York, at Borough Hall, Syracuse, New York, Akron, Ohio, number two, South Main Street, Canton, Ohio, Cincinnati, Ohio, at the Federal Courts House at 100 East 5th. Well, I'm going to tell you what, Cincinnati can be a problematic little town for you, too because they've got Russian and Ukrainian cops on the job there who work directly for the chief of police, or used to, who take down drug dealers and black dealers in Cincinnati and just kill them, even though you've got a black chief of police. Greater Cleveland, Ohio. Toledo, Ohio. Toledo, Ohio, second one. McAllister, Oklahoma. Portland, Oregon. Allentown, PA. Harrisburg, PA. Philadelphia, PA. Westchester, Pennsylvania. Houston, Texas. I'm just going through Chattanooga, Tennessee. Memphis, Tennessee on Beale Street. Yeah, you're going to tear up Beale Street, the only uh, uh, place there at the Rulana Rain Motel where Martin Luther King was shot at the Civil Rights Museum. Martin Luther King would not be going out wilding to kill white people. Martin Luther King would not be going out dressed up in hoodies and going out wilding and you know, beating up white people or killing white people or murdering two boys in a parking lot, uh, white young men who had a uh, free George Zimmerman sticker on their truck and they're sitting there in the Golden Corral or whatever steakhouse and a group of uh, four or five black guys come up and get the gun, start arguing, and then they shoot these two guys dead. None of this has been talking about on national TV. It's not making it. Columbia, South Carolina, Nashville, Tennessee, Austin, Texas on Congress Avenue, Bastrop, Texas, Dallas, Texas, 1100 Commerce Street, 1100 Commerce, uh, Dallas, number two, uh, Jenny Lane, Jenny Lee Lane, Dallas, Houston, that's a federal building, another in Houston, City Hall, Jasper, Texas, San Antonio, Wichita Falls, Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, Alexandria, Virginia, Harrisonburg, Lynchburg, Virginia. There you go, Lynchburg. Norfolk, Newport News, Richmond, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Roanoke, Martinsburg, West Virginia, Racine, Wisconsin. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. That's a large number of protests, a whole heck of a lot of them. And I would tell you, uh, it would be your right, if you wanted to, to go down, and if you have concealed carry in your state, you can do concealed carry. If you have the ability to open carry, you can open carry, and you can uh, go down and you can do a demonstration in support of the Second Amendment, in support of the Second Amendment, in support of the Fourth Amendment, in support of the First Amendment. And then you would see a large number of white, black, Hispanic, American Indian, Asian, of all stripes, all colors, all creeds, who appreciate the Bill of Rights, the Constitution, the right to bear arms, and the fact that one of the God-given rights is defend yourself and self-defense against people who come against you and your family and come against your house or your property, and you have the right to stand your ground. And they want to take that away, Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson, Holder, the race criminal holder and the, the criminal who killed the white babies, a large number of them at Waco and black babies at Waco too, who participated with Butch Reno and giving the orders to kill those kids. How quickly we forget all this stuff.
there is a history. There's a long train of abuses and usurpations. And you have a president who is using the Social Security number of a dead white man from Connecticut, allegedly, allegedly, whose grandmother gave him that Social Security number when she worked for the Social Security Administration in Hawaii, allegedly, because allegedly the birth certificate was a fake or phony, and he has no right to be the President of the United States, rather, you know, let alone the joker tut lizard of the world or the Antichrist that he seems to be bucking for. No right whatsoever. That's usurpation of power. Went a long train of abuses and usurpations. Let me read it rather than say it. But went a long train of abuses and usurpations, pursuing invariably the same object evinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism. It is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Because you see, the Joker Tut did not provide any kind of guard against future security. He gave the hoodwink nod he gave the hoodwink nod to the 132 some cities I talked to you about for them to go ahead and go wilding. Martin Luther King's niece came out. She said, by golly, Martin Luther King would not be wearing a hoodie and doing this kind of stuff. You don't go out wild and you're going to kill whitey. You're going to go into the suburbs and kill white people. Well, let me tell you something. You don't want to come <laughs> to the suburbs and kill white people because you're also going to find that there are a lot of black people in the suburbs and that they are armed as well and they don't want their homes burnt down. They don't want their children terrorized. Their kids go to a good school. You see, we were doing rather well in this country, but it doesn't allow Joker Touch to come to power. You ran there, Joker Touch, on bringing everybody together, didn't you? And now you're doing the exact opposite as you side with the Luciferian bankers, as you side with the Luciferian warmongers. And all of the stuff you said you were going to do, you lied because it ain't happening. And to consequently, young black people have 30, 40, 50 percent unemployment rates in the major cities. And now you're telling them to go out and kill Whitey because it's Whitey's fault? Well, you know what? Last time I looked there, Joker Tut, you're half white. So it doesn't make any sense. You're not providing leadership. Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson, they're trying to create Ordo Abkeo. That's what keeps them on top. And that what keeps little demonic eyed, little twee, little tweety birds uh, sitting on Al Sharpton's lap because he's got the big long green, baby. He got the big long green and probably the blue pill Viagra now, you know? Well, it's no mystery. If you do it on the back and you become the puppet Negro, you become the puppet slave of the Massa to keep all the other slaves down, then you gain power on the backs of their backs. At the same time, the one-third or, you know, one-quarter, one-third, depending on what statistics you look at, of wealthy and middle class and upper middle class Black families, they want to buy a house. They want to send their kids to college. They're struggling with car payments, all these things. Why do they want to teach their children to go out and riot when the very fact of the matter is they may own the business that's employing other blacks, employing whites, employing Hispanics, employing Asians, employing American Indians, employing people of Middle Eastern descent? You see? They may own the business that you're now telling them to go out and you don't know who owns the building and burn it down. And it could be one of the wealthy black Americans who owns it or one of the upper middle class or the doctors or, or lawyers or professional class. You see, not everybody is being kept in the ghetto or in the projects. 
because that gives power to the Sharptons and gives power to the Jesse Jacksons. This has to stop, but it will not stop till Lord Jesus comes back. And I'm going to tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, you need to prepare like there's no tomorrow and stand your ground. And I would tell you this. I've been hearing from people all over, and they're saying stuff like, <coughs> if they want to come down my suburban lane, they want to come down my country lane and come at my farm or my ranch, they want to come into my building, they want to come into my neighborhood and start killing white people, said if they come, they're going to be stacked up like cordwood. Because you want to know something. Your street gangs were given all these weapons by the federal government. Yes, the federal government with the gang peace armed all the street gangs in America. This is what they originally designed to do. The street gangs and now just the race riots are designed to promote or provoke or foment civil war in the United States and martial law. Don't go into this Luciferian night without a fight, regardless which color, creed you are. I tell you, though, stand for the Lord Jesus. Stand for the Bill of Rights. Defend your family. Don't take crap off of anybody. And to the mighty men and women of Earth, thank you for all you do. Last night, ladies and gentlemen, there were 32 Sky King messages, all separate, no repeats, 32 of them. We're either going to war or there's going to be martial law and attack in the U.S. It could start tomorrow. To old Mickey Lapua, I know you're dialed in to them old Fandango Rangers. God bless you and good night. <laughs>